Hey guys, Thunder E here, and Marion was trying to solve a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> almost, almost close. Yeah, he's pretty close. Um, welcome back to our professional photographer review of smartphones, and this time it's the Pixel 3, or at least the Pixel 3 Excel in this case. How's it going, Marion? I'm good, thank you. And you? I'm good, good. So uh, this time, Marion has decided to use the Pixel 3 Excel, and you know the deal. He's going to play around with the phone using different scenarios, what he likes, what he doesn't like. So without even wasting time, let's jump in. Let's do it. We're starting with looking at the portrait mode, which in case you have seen some of our videos, I am not the biggest fan of the digital artificial portrait mode because I'm a little bit spoiled by the big cameras I'm using with big sensors, where you get this uh, natural fall off of sharpness towards the, the background. But um, I want to admit that the Pixel 3 is for the first time doing a real nice and organic job at this, at least uh, to my eyes. You, you still get um, you still get like the little unsharp edges around the uh, the subject. Um, actually, it seems like the resolution of where the sharpness hits unsharpness is a little bit reduced. Uh, I can see those like segments where a few pixels have been. Uh, combined um, those segments where you go from sharp to unsharp but nonetheless the the general feel of this seems to be more natural to me than the other phones we have tested as of right now so I like I like what's going on here um, my usual complaint is that the background is becoming very blurry whilst the foreground always stays in focus so that's the same here you see maybe the hand the hand of uh, Prashamek my kitesurf buddy is fully in focus whilst the fins are slowly turning into a blur. Um, same here, um, this one is actually really interesting, I think, because the phone did a great job at um, gradually um, making the, the object that he's holding in his hand, the kite, more and more and more blurry towards the wingtip that's far behind him. Um, you see, <clears throat> that's actually what you would expect from a, from a big lens shooting on a big sensor. So here, there's actually a really organic transition going on. The phone achieves, achieves this with just one lens compared to other phones like the iPhone and I think the Huawei and the Samsung who are using, uh, these phones are using several lenses to get this mode. So I don't know how Google does it, but it does a very good job at this. Um, but I think because there's a lot of artificial, artificial intelligence behind this, uh, sometimes it goes wrong. Like for example, in this photo where um, the sand, the beach behind my model in this case should be uh, completely out of focus but there are some very sharp areas as well as the building here on the left side that randomly stays sharp. I don't know why this happened but you have got those shots every now and then in between where things go a little bit wrong. Well, I guess it's a lot of mathematics. So on this one I was trying the HDR enhanced mode. Um, I want to say that I've been shooting a lot with the HDR plus mode. I had this one basically always enabled because I thought that it did a very good job at, for example, recovering um, clouds that are in the background. It did a very organic job. Um, the last phone that we have been testing was the iPhone SS, what was it? Ten, SX ten. Max. <laughs> so, um, and I thought that the iPhone was doing a very good job at those uh, smart HDRs. And with the Google Pixel, it's called HDR plus or HD plus. Uh, HDR plus enhanced. So um, I left the HDR on because it was doing a very good job and in this one I tested the HDR enhanced. So I was expecting that it really tries to recover as much as it can for example out of the sun here which has a big white halo around it. So this is like the sun is gone basically there's nothing left inside the JPEG but then I took the raw file and recovered and I could actually recover even more of the clouds around. So in the raw file you have more information than in this particular case in the JPEG. Um, it, um, it does look very natural though, even the um, enhanced HDR mode. And uh, the reason why I took this particular image to test or this particular environment to test the HDR enhanced mode was because I was expecting the phone to shoot several images and stitch them together. But in this case, there's so much moving surf it was moving water surface and I would have expected some of the water drops to to have some halo ghost water drops around them. But it seems like the Pixel just took one single image to do all this uh, HDR enhanced mathematics. So I don't know how it did it. It did a decent job. 
uh, you get a good file out of out of this. Um, the only downside about the HDR enhanced mode is that uh, the phone is thinking about your photo for about a half second or maybe even a second after you did the shot and then only you can take another photograph. Um, the phone does a terrific job at shooting at dark and night times. This particular shot has <laughs> I had a fun party, a Halloween party. This is DJ Confetti who has been playing for nine hours straight, which is just amazing. So, um, and I shot everything always in RAW and JPEG mode. So, and as I said earlier, the, um, the HDR, the regular HDR mode was always on because I thought it did a great job. So here's a JPEG compared to a RAW file. Um, I actually put a little bit of contrast on the RAW file to match the JPEG. Both of the files look, look very good. No complaints about JPEG compression or actually artificial sharpening or whatsoever. Um, just interesting on this one is that the, uh, the HDR naturally recovers the highlights that are actually difficult to recover manually in, uh, in my program Capture One that I use to um, use for my RAW files. So yeah, the uh, phone does a great job at giving you, um, giving you nice JPEGs even at nighttime. Okay, and on, this on these photos I'm looking at the nighttime mode, which is quite an amazing thing because it seems like the phone is sort of scanning the environment that you're shooting. Um, I am very impressed by whatever the phone was able to capture because the can like you see my friends being lit up by a candle basically. I am not used to seeing skin tones whenever a picture has been taken with a candlelight. Um, even more impressive than that is that the light that you see in the background, the blue light, is basically nighttime. This is uh, leftover street light that's coming into this bar. Um, so this, this photo, the environment that I took this photo in was much more moody than what you see here. I would almost go ahead and say like <laughs> it was looking like this to the human eye or even like, like this. So um, that's amazing and uh, to the point that I'm almost wishing uh, or I, I am wishing that the phone did uh, not think about it that hard because I want to be able to capture the mood and the nighttime kind of destroys it a little bit for me because you get a real natural, uh, like a, a real neutral file out of an environment that, uh, that is dark and moody. So the mood is being taken, is being removed and it gives you some sort of like scan of the nighttime environment that, that is that is completely unreal. So um, maybe it's a software thing. Maybe maybe it would be a good thing for Google to give you two versions of the of the photo, where one version is like the moody version, the other version is the um, well, the enhanced or whatever, the recovered <laughs> version. So maybe they can work on that, and maybe it's just a software thing. But as of right now, the nighttime mode is giving me a little bit too much. Here, this shot I took. Um, I just wanted to show you this one as a comparison between a JPEG and a RAW file, just to look at textures maybe and grain. Um, I think that the Pixel JPEGs look great. Um, you don't necessarily need to shoot RAW files unless you really want to like, be able to recover highlights and shadows. Uh, I'm, I'm not concerned about the JPEGs. Um, there's not so much sharpening uh, as in other phones that we have tested, so it keeps a little bit of an organic, uh, organic feel to the photos. Um, I, apparently the lens is just better than, uh, than for example, the LG's lens. Um, there were a few images, especially in dark environments where I shot, um, compa compared the RAW files and the JPEGs, and there were a few moments where the JPEG just compressed um, certain areas of the image and made them very flat. But that's really not nothing I'm really concerned about. So I mean, if you consider shooting in a professional manner, then always shoot RAW files. But the JPEGs of the Google Pixel 3 look pretty good. Um, so the, the self-portrait lens, uh, the front-facing camera, has a wide-angle lens, which is awesome. It's really fun. I wish it was on the back of the phone because I don't usually take selfies, but I, uh, well, I did one just to prove that there is one uh, as, uh, this wide-angle camera. Um, here you see RAW file compared to JPEG. Weirdly, all of the RAW files that I've shot have a little bit different proportion than the JPEG. I do not know why, but it's just a fact that it is like that. 
Um, I wanted to show you this one in particular quickly because it is shot in a backlight environment and backlight is always a tricky one for cameras to handle and the Google camera does really well. So let's, I'll just increase the contrast a little bit, uh, make it a little bit darker maybe, um, a little vignette, well, like the small things to make the photo a little more dramatic maybe. Um, saturation, they come a little bit grey as raw files, but that's okay, you can always crank up the saturation. And now um, I think I'll actually make it even a little bit more dark for the sky. And I wanted to show you that the shadows, here in this case my face and my wetsuit, you can still go ahead and recover them, which is, which is great. The phone does a, phone does a good job. Uh, raw files are looking good. The lens seems to be pretty sharp. So yeah, I am satisfied with what, whatever I'm seeing here. So you've seen Marian's thoughts on the uh, Pixel 3 XL, and it sounds like you, you really like this phone. Yeah, I do like this phone. It was really fun to work with, um, fun, well, fun to dive into the ocean with, but um, also one of the reasons why this video is coming so late is because we actually fried basically two Google Pixel 3 camera uh, phones. The, the IP68 rating on this thing is, is whack, it's false. Do not put this thing in water because yeah. Most likely your USB ports will not work, so it was hard for us to transfer the files over. Yeah. And speaking of that, file naming is absolutely terrible. Yeah, it's, it's not good. It's really not good. On my, on my shoots, I always have a person uh, called Digital Tech who is dedicating his day to organizing files, troubleshooting the camera if necessary, and taking care of color profiles. Um, the Google Pixel file names are all over the place. It's a real mess. Uh, like, yeah. <laughs> The digital tech would never work with me again, basically. Uh, uh, and also, like when you start editing photos inside the inside the phone, then they come out without color profile, which is interesting, unexpected. Well, but yeah. still, it still doesn't take away from like the quality of the camera. It's it's really fun to work with. I like a few little things inside the camera that, uh, for example, the, the exposure point is sticky. Yeah. So like you you hit you hit a cloud or whatever, and, uh, and then you move the phone and it's going to stick to that point. But it's really clever. Lots of artificial intelligence in there. Yeah. Google software. Uh, I think they've done a good job. You like the portrait mode. I did. Uh, yes. The night shots you like, but you rather have it keep some of that mood in there exactly. as well. Um, it seems to be uh, trying really, really hard to give you rather a scan of the environment right. than actually a moody representation of what you're taking a photo of. So before we wrap up, you really like this phone. Does this beat out the Huawei? Mind you, we've not done the Mate 20 Pro yet. This is um, the P20 he tried, so. Um, well, it does, it does take great photos. It's yeah. really fun to take photos with as well. Bursts are really fun, and like, especially when you're doing like, action sports, like kite surfing, the bursts are really great. But I, when I first held the Huawei in my hands, I was looking at the screen and the photos. I was like, "Wow, this is actually coming really close to like a little, little what do they call it? A little, uh, little like one point, word, and point and shoot camera." Whilst this one feels like a cell phone camera, but a very good cell phone camera, and especially like there's a, a brain behind this one. So that's where where actually Google might be even like superior to my DSLR camera because my DSLR doesn't think about my files in the same manner as the Google phone does. So. All right. Oh, something's happening there. So there you have it. He likes the phone. Uh, he's enjoyed it. We, of course, need to fix the IP68 <laughs> rating. Yes. But if you have any questions or any comments for Marian or myself, let us know. Uh, definitely, we'll try and also add, not today, but I'll add images for you so you can check out. And uh, this is Alaska, who I'm allergic to, by the way, guys. Uh, so I don't just want to have a cat in the video, like some of you claim. But definitely follow Marion Cells on uh, Instagram. It is Marion Cell. And I also leave the link for you guys down below. Don't forget to like and share this video, favorite this video, subscribe to the channel, and always enjoy your entertainment. Bye bye.